Hey right bags, it's Jade with another guide today taking a look at the brand new armour and shields in Valheim Mistland update. Any changes will come, I'll do another video to correct it, but I think this is pretty much set for the full release. It's an involved process, there's no point in me just showing you the stats which I'm going to go over, like you can do that yourself in creative mode. Instead what I'm going to talk about is the process of getting the crafting benches and how to get them resources and talk about the viability, especially of the shields, which one I prefer and your dreams of becoming a battle mage are going to take a significant amount of work. So let's start off with the crafting process. So the sap extractors, I've done a bunch of guides on this already, but you need 10 Idrisil wood, 5 black metal, 1 diverger extractor, and the workbench. The diverger extractor, of course, you get from the blue and white long boxes inside the diverger outposts. Hopefully you've seen enough YouTube videos and streams to realise that if you tap the divergers or anything inside their outpost, they'll go aggro on you. My top tips for this are to kite some other creatures and let them thin out the Diverger Dwarves and then go in there and get what you need with the Diverger Extractor. Now you can't teleport these, obviously that makes sense as obviously you're extracting it from just the special Idrisil branches rather than anything else. So you're going to need to make sure you bring the right materials with you, and in this case it's 5 black metal. Plus of course 10 Idrisil wood. And stab it inside one of the Idrisil roots. So bring your longship with all the resources you need or make sure you set up some sort of outpost in the plains which is usually bordering the mislands. You want to be able to craft three of these really to get an effective farm to start with. Once you've planted the verger extractor it doesn't take too long to fill up. You'll get 10 pieces, it will drain, it usually takes a full day. The root will drain but it should replenish itself also. So effectively it's everlasting. What happens though, maybe after a couple days, you might not start getting as much. You might only get six out of it in one day. And sometimes it will say the root is completely drained. So maybe the devs have got an idea of making it completely drained and you'll have to find a new one. But I got at least maybe 140 in the space of maybe something like 10 or 12 days. And that was initially using five, six extractors and then just one extractor for the rest of the days. I'm going to work more on this and I'll have a separate video talking about exactly how long and how much you get from each route. So once you've got the sap, it's maybe time to think about the refinery. So it needs 20 black marble, which you can get from the petrified bone. Or if you bring a stone cutter's table with you, you can actually dismantle all of the black marble ruins, particularly the bridges, and that will help you get that black marble super quick. You'll find metal constructs with inside some of the bridges. To demolish them with a hammer, you'll need the forge. Otherwise, you might be able to go ahead and do it with the new black pickaxes. Petrified bone is obviously meant to be the way that you get it a lot. But it does alert a lot of activity to you. You'll more than likely be attacked by seekers as you're gathering it. If you're playing solo and you're not maybe that confident, you could aim for these waylights. Each one should give you four black marble when you demolish it. It's going to take a good few hits, even with a black pickaxe as you can't simply demolish it with a hammer and a crafting bench. Hit it from the top and you should be able to get four black marble. And then it's the black cores. You're gonna need the black cores not only for the refinery, but also the gouda table, the black forge as well. So you're gonna need 15 black cores if you want to get every crafting bench you need. From what I can tell, I think I've discovered at least five black cores in each of the infested mines, but I have heard reports from other players saying they haven't found that many in each. But first things first, get the refinery made and then focus on either the Black Forge or choose to go ahead and get the Galder table. It all depends on your playstyle. If you're going to mess around with the mage stuff, then I would go for the Galder table. If you simply want to get the Carapace arm set and a lot more of the weapons, I would go for the Black Forge. They both have an upgrade. Black Forge cooler is 5 iron, 5 copper, 4 black marble. And the rune table for the Galder table is 10 black marble, 5 Idrisil wood, 10 refined ether. Again, it's pretty expensive to get the upgrade for the rune table. Now, while you're getting them black cores from the infested mines, you should be looking out to get as much carapace as possible. You might want to run in and run out and maybe take your chances against some of the seekers as you explore the mistlands. But since you're here, it's well worth investing in time and clearing out the whole mine, as that's going to build up your biggest resource of carapace. It's harder to fight inside the infested mines, though. You might not be able to get around or circle some of the seekers because their weak points are at the back of them. So you're better off using things like flame arrows, ice arrows, as these two items are probably going to be the best for dealing with them, or high impact. I'd also make sure you've got the bone mass attribute on. With the bone mass powers, you've got more resistance, and the seekers don't do any kind of fire damage. 
to definitely have bone mass when you're about to go and venture into the infested mines. Something with range like an Atgar or a spear, and like I said, keep aiming for the back of them. At the moment in the PTB, it does seem to be a bit of an overspawn with high powered seekers. You're not meant to have quite as many of the two star ones roaming around, especially during the day that does seem to be a glitch where they shouldn't be there. So hopefully by the time it comes out for everyone, it'll be a bit more balanced and it won't be as hard running around. Don't forget the secret areas inside the infested mines, little doorways and obviously gateways that will open up to more areas. Also don't forget also to chop through the wooden constructs to break through. So the carapace, breastplates and greaves, they cost 20 carapace each. You're also going to need three scale hide each. The hairs shouldn't be too hard to kill. You can pretty much melee them if you find a nice little corner or just get your bow shots up and good. Obviously another 10 iron, five iron each for each of these. And then you will need 10 refined ether for both of them. The carapace helmet is a bit different. It's only 15 carapace, three scale hide, five refined ether and two mandibles. The mandibles you get from soldiers. So you may have to kill two of the soldier variants to craft the helmet. It's not an easy task killing soldiers. You will need a lot more space to get around them. When they do their stump and when they do their roar, that's your best opportunity to time it. Circle around them and hopefully get their weak spot. If you see any one star or two stars, run away. You will not win. So total 55 carapace, nine scale hides, two mandibles and 25 refined ether. Not to mention 10 iron. To upgrade them all to level 2, you gain additional 2 armour and an extra 200 in durability. The breastplate and the greaves, you're going to need 3 carapace each, 2 scale hides and 3 iron, plus 3 refined ether. And for the helmet, you're going to need 3 carapace, 3 scale hides, 2 mandible again, 2 refined ether. So that could be another 2 soldiers you're going to have to kill. Of course, you are going to need that upgrade, but like I said, it's the cheaper option out of the upgrades compared to the older table with only iron, copper and black marble needed. So next up, the older table. Hopefully you've been refining enough ether now. And relatively, it should be easy if you've cleared out two or three of the infested mines, you'll have enough black cores. So the Magic Robe set has only 500 durability on each piece. It gives 16 armor. And of course, the main important part is the ether reach, how long it takes for it to quickly replenish your ether bar. The hood only gives 20%, but the robe, as well as the trousers, they give 40. So effectively you're giving 100% ether regen quicker than without. Remember you don't need these to use magic. You can wear all battle mage set like the carapace and you can still use the staff. All you need to make sure is though that you've got food that has ether inside it. But of course to be an effective mage, then yeah, wearing the full armor set is gonna be better for you. Now, if you're thinking of upgrading, I would actually say hold off. It's maybe not the focus. You might want to try getting more of the weapons using that refined ether. It's only a small amount. You're effectively increasing the armor pieces by two, but I was a bit disappointed to see that the magic regen doesn't actually increase. It's relatively cheap though to go ahead and upgrade them, but would you actually need to craft them first? It's 20 linen thread each for the robes and the trousers and 15 linen thread for the ether weave hood. And that's exactly the same for refined ether. You'll need 20 for the robe and trousers and 15 for the hood. The robe is going to require 10 feathers and 5 scale hide. The trousers just 10 scale hide. And the hood curiously needs 2 pieces of iron. I guess for the buckle at the front. To upgrade them you'll need an additional 4 scale hide for the trousers and robe. Plus another 2 feathers, 4 linen thread and 4 refined ether. And for the hood, two linen thread, one refined ether, one iron. Once again, in creative mode, you can craft higher levels, but at the moment, there's no way to do that legit because there's no other crafting stations. And I guess that's warning. Don't be using magical stuff unless you've got the food to back it up. If you're only eating some of the raw mushrooms, you're not gonna have much ether at all. So it's important that if you're going for the magic build, you're gonna quickly be able to have some of the foods that are gonna give you magic alongside it. If you cook some stuffed mushrooms, that's going to give you 75 ether. But the best one to aim for is the seeker aspic. But again, some of these recipes do require quite involved pieces. The blood clots you get from killing some of the ticks. The mage cap obviously you find around. And the seeker, you're going to need some of that seeker meat and royal jelly that you obviously get from the infested mines. I will have a more detailed guide about all the foods as well as fishing coming up as well. So, not as much armor as the wolf set. 
but more than the iron you want to be utilizing your magic set while at range and then making sure that you can also craft again the weapons i really feel like mage is served best when you have got access to all of the staves so again that's going to be a lot of refined ether like sure take one of them with you but you'll soon get into a loop of casting the staff of protection then utilizing frost or embers depending on what enemy you're facing the feather cape is 10 feathers five scale hide and 20 refined ether i would say that would probably be the one you should craft first it might be really cool to get on the magic side but you'll have a much easier time exploring the mistlands if you've got some feather capes of course it only has one armor just like the rest of the capes but not only is it giving you limited full damage and full speed it's also resistant against frost so that's the armors what about the shields so we've got two the carapace shield and the carapace buckler the larger shield is going to cost 20 carapace free scale hide 10 refined ether the small one 10 carapace free scale hide 10 ether the larger one's obviously got a weight of five a durability of 200 a block armor of 96 block full 60 parry bonus 1.5 and a movement speed of minus five and the buckler has a weight of five durability 200 block armor 78 block force 50 parry bonus 2.5 and again the same movement speed penalty looking at it i would say that the buckler gives maybe more value especially as you won't need as many carapace pieces it's not that far off either in terms of block armor and especially block force only 10 worse but you do get a parry bonus of 2.5 with it too to upgrade both of them, you need 10 carapace pieces each. Free scale hide, and the buckler only takes two refined ether instead of three for the carapace shield. It's pretty gnarly, it's pretty cool. It's literally like the face of the jar or tick. I do like particularly the sharp edges of this one. So that's my top tips. Decide what you're going to go through, but make sure you've got enough resources to follow it through. If you're going to go down the magic build, you're going to have to spend more time gathering a lot of the resources and particularly making sure that your cauldrons are all upgraded to level 5 and you're ready and able to cook a lot of the meals that give you the magic ether. That might be doable, especially if you're doing it in a group, you've cleared out a bunch of the infested mines, then one of you could certainly become the magician and you might have enough resources to really get it underway. Otherwise, yeah, the route really should be Black Forge, but exception being you want the order table made so you could go ahead and get the feather cape. So I would focus on that. Get both of them made, get the feather cape first, then focus on more armors. Agree, disagree, let me know in the comment section down below and look out for more involved guides to do with food, cooking, and of course the brand new fishing mechanics like I told you earlier. Until next time, Rat Bags, laters.